Welcome to Off the Record. Meet Manu Joseph, author of Serious Men and winner of the Hindu Best Fiction Award 2010. Manu is the editor of the Open Magazine. He was based in Mumbai but has just uh, moved to Delhi. Uh, welcome to the show and congratulations. Second time I'm reading the book because the first time I read it when uh, I attended your launch. I thought the speech you made at the award ceremony was hilarious because Manu had the audience in splits. It was his a relationship with the Hindu and with Chennai, so maybe start with that. Yes, I have a, uh, I have a long uh, emotional association with the Hindu because I grew up in Madras and I always insist on calling it Madras. I, I can't call it Chennai. Um, <clears throat> and Hindu was this uh, incorruptible, uh, unattainable newspaper. And as a young aspiring writer, I thought, uh, if I could be on the Hindu, uh, uh, I would have possibly achieved something. Uh, and I tried uh, many things. I, I, the, on, uh, the only means available to a person like me was to try sending letters to the editor. And I would manufacture opinions and uh, uh, send them. In front. I, as, I, as I said yesterday, I tried ordinary post, I tried couriering it and I would go to one place where uh, I would get it typed professionally because I thought I mean, to impress the Hindu, I mean you have to do a few things professionally and the typists were fed up of me and they didn't understand the issues. I mean in fact when I would approach they will say Vandata, you know. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> uh, uh, so yeah, well, but uh, they, they didn't publish any of my letters, you know. So. Um, uh, to me, being published in the Hindu was uh, the final frontier, so uh, fi winning the award seems like some kind of a cosmic justice to me. You know, this is, like I said earlier, this is the second time I'm reading the book and it was pure joy. Do you think we should share the plot? Would you like to tell our viewers a little bit about uh, the book so that we don't give away too much? So yes. may I leave that to you? Yeah, sure. Uh, serious Men is about uh, uh, two men. Uh, one is um, Ayan Mani, who lives uh, in a chawl in Bombay. Um, he is a person who is uh, who's very unhappy with the world around him because he feels that he has been left behind. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the story is told from the point of view of Ayan Mani and also uh, Arvind Acharya, who is an astrophysicist, uh, uh, who is the, who's the uh, head, of, head of, an of, of an institute in, in Bombay, a scientific institute. And Arvind Acharya has uh, his own convictions and he's trying to push uh, his own agenda. And how the paths of these two men meet uh, and their interpretation of life, etc., is basically what the book is all about. May I just add a little sure, bit to that? Uh, Ayan Mani actually works as a personal assistant yes. or a peon to Arvinda Acharya and yes. he is very resentful of the fact that the Brahmins have moved yes. forward and have always controlled power wh yes. whereas he is a Dalit. Yes. I noticed that you did not mention that Ayan Mani is a Dalit and in yes. a previous interview yes. you said that that's completely incidental. Yes. Yes. Explain fact, that. <clears throat> if someone uh, pointed a book to me saying it's by an Indian author and it's about a Dalit uh, protagonist. I will definitely not read the book, you know, because I, mean, I don't want to read about issues. I want fiction to be fiction and I would suspect that book of having uh, hidden agendas, you know, which I don't have in this book. And to me, <coughs> Iron Money, <coughs> the characterization of Iron Money needed a few things. And uh, where he gets his intellectual energy from is his resentment. And I wondered, now, an intelligent guy like Iron Money seems to hate most of the world. Now, He's, he's a clever guy. You know, why is he... Because the humor in the book is chiefly driven by Ayan Mani's observations of people who are better than him, like young women on the promenade and men and stuff like that. So I thought the only way I can justify the anger in an intelligent person is by giving him a historical anger, make, making his anger something historical. So that obviously I know this guy whom I'm writing about and it struck me that obviously this guy is a Dalit, you know, in fact, I know this, this person. In fact, the fact that he was a Dalit did not strike me in the beginning. To me, he was a poor person living in Bombay. But when I was trying for depth of the character, I realized that the reason why this person is very clear in my head 
is that he, he's a Dalit, you know, the kind of person I used to meet uh, in, in Madras and later in Bombay, you know. So, uh, so that is the reason I tried not to play that, uh, that angle too much, though I understand it is very crucial to the tone of the book. Yes. So you're saying that in the promotion, you don't want to mention that he is I don't want to put off yeah. people like me. You know, <laughs> so which was the character that came first, Iron Money? It or? was always Iron Money. It was Iron Money's book eventually, because uh, there was a certain uh, uh, world view which uh, inspired me to write this book. I thought it would be very interesting. See, the, what happens in India is the right people. Uh, in, it is all very appropriate. You know, the kind of person who is interpreting a kind of world is it's all very symmetrical and uh, dignified. You know. I thought it will be hilarious if a guy who is not supposed to interpret something like say the Indian modern life, you know, or life on the Bombay sea face, what would be going through this guy's mind? In fact, that's another thing actually, a lot of my, my friends who are women, uh, they tell me that they are petrified to even guess what their drivers would be thinking about them. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when they are in the party clothes, you know, these guys must be having such funny views and they must be looking at things which we don't want to really know. And I thought that's a very interesting view. Now, what if I give that view? Okay, what is this guy thinking? I'm going to put that in the novel, you know. So that was another trigger for writing the novel. So Ayn Mani was the source. But then when I began to write the novel and the character of the scientist, Arvind Acharya, who I was very fond of, you know, uh, I kept on expanding his character and all the and, and as I was writing the novel I became more confident with characterization which was extremely tough yes but as my confidence grew I could breathe life into more, more and more characters mm -hmm. no what I find really astonishing is how you've been able to portray uh, these two uh, protagonists very very different in, yes. in uh, uh, <clears throat> background upbringing caste yes. everything but beautifully fleshed out and also all the other characters, in fact, even the minor characters yes. in the novel. So you have to tell us how that's, that was possible for you, yes. you being a journalist yes. used to a different kind of writing. This is your first yes. book and to win a prize, yes. which Sashi Deshpande, who's one of the um, jury members, she, uh, she said at the ceremony that she quoted Hilary Mantel and said that, uh, Mantel said that any prize is the result of negotiation and compromise yes. but in your case the agreement was unanimous which I thought was a wonderful compliment. Yes. So when we come back after the break, uh, Manu Joseph, author of Serious Men and winner of the Hindu Best Fiction Award 2010 will tell us what went into the making of the book. Stay tuned to Off the Record.